It is Wednesday, my dudes, which means it's time for another First Thoughts and Initial Impressions Epic 7 video. This one will be on Empyrean and Illinav, the newest Moonlight 5 star that was just shown earlier this morning over on YouTube. You already know the drill. I'm going to give you my two cents on the character. Do I think she's good? Where would I play her? What kinds of equipment sets and artifacts I'd play her on? All the stuff you've come to expect from this series. So strap in and let's watch Illinav's S3 animation. Do not fear. The blood on my spear will not be forgotten. The promises of this spear will not be forgotten. For the future of the Wind Tribe. Seriously, why are the only cool looking frames in this S3 animation the initial ones? Like, they're making it really hard for me to use something for a thumbnail to distinguish myself from the official channel. I'm probably still going to use the initial frames anyway because it's so damn cool. Speaking of so damn cool, in the English dub of Epic 7, Empyrean Illinav, as well as all versions of Rowana, is voiced by the amazing Christina V. So the story goes, as a child, she wanted to be a voiceover artist after watching the anime Sailor Moon. After a chance encounter at an anime convention, she would be offered an audition by none other than Wendy Lee. Yes, that Wendy Lee. What follows is probably one of the more successful voiceover careers in the video game and anime space in the last 20 years. For me to show you every single major role Christina has done, would take a really long time, so I'm just going to show you some of my favorites here on your screen. Eventually, she did land that dream role as Sailor Mars in Sailor Moon Crystal. Moving on to Empyrean Illinab stats, she is a Light Knight of the Cancer Zodiac symbol. Her stat line currently is unique to her, and it's a pretty damn good one because it's the 5 star equivalent of the 3 star Eaton. So you already know, this character is going to be dummy thick. Taking a look at her stats, she has 794 attack, 767 defense, 7,332 health, 95 base speed, 15% critical hit chance, 150% critical hit damage, and no starting effectiveness or effect resistance. Her imprint for the team is effect resistance, and she has an imprint of health percentage for herself because, yeah, you could just make her even tankier. And she, make no mistake, is probably the tankiest knight in the entire game. She has the highest defense amongst all knights in Epic 7, as well as the highest health total amongst all knights in Epic 7. Obviously, the biggest drawback to her stats is that 95 base speed, which is pretty damn slow. Before we can talk further about Illinav and analyze the kit, we kind of first have to know what it does, no? So let's talk about the skills in the order that they're shown, starting with the skill 2, Dragon's Pride. It is a passive skill that increases the penetration resistance of all allies by 20 to 30 percent, depending on Malagora. After every attack suffered by an ally, increases the combat readiness of Illinav by 10%. Her skill 3 is Unyielding Blow. You acquire 3 souls upon use, and it has a 4-5 to five turn cooldown depending on Malagora. It is a single target attack that inflicts up to 20% of the target's max health as injuries before dispelling 2 debuffs from all allies and granting Indomitable for 2 turns to the entire ally team. In case you forgot... Indomitable increases the defense and effect resistance by 30%, and yes, that does stack with Vigor. Finally, we come to her basic attack, which is Sword of Punishment. Attacks the enemy with a sword, absorbing some of the damage dealt as health, and inflicts injuries on the target up to 10% of their maximum health. And of course, since it's an Illinav, we have to have some kind of super amazing explosive soul burn that does big damage based on injuries. So here you go. For the cost of 10 souls, increases the damage dealt on this move and deals additional damage equal to 50% of injuries inflicted on the target. This attack does not trigger a dual attack. Okay, so now we know the key. Ladies and gentlemen of the turn two committee. We are so back! Is this the feeling that fast players get when they get something amazing? I wouldn't know because it almost never happens in Epic 7. Not in Smilegate's Epic 7 in 2024. I can actually feel Valky groaning from all the way across the U.S. If you are a turn two player, if you play PvP seriously, you get the Illinav, baby. Don't write to me in the comments section how you're saving for Harseti. Just don't do it. At this point, everything is bait for Harseti. Even Harseti is bait for Harseti. Let me see 
if I can convince some of you who are going to be holdouts on why this unit is so insane, and I'm going to start with our passive skill, Dragon's Prime. Granting 30% penetration resistance is the buff that I wish Fallen Cecilia had gotten, but didn't. 30% doesn't seem like a lot, but it is no joke when it comes to mitigating damage. Let me give you an example. A 4,000 attack, 300 critical hit damage, attack buffed Straze typically does around 41,000 damage to someone like Dragon Bride Senya. If you have Empyrean Illinav on your team with her S2 maxed out to 30%, that same Straze only does 16,637 damage instead. That Dragon Bride Senya is living. An Enraged Genua with the same stats with a greater attack buff does roughly 26k damage with his full combo to a 1500 defense bruiser or tank. If Illinav is on the team, that same combo is struggling to crack 14,000 damage. Illinav lets you survive all of the nonsense that I have been complaining about for the entire last year. Midnight Galilius, she can't kill things. Blood Moon Haste counters, those do drastically reduce damage. Navy Captain Landy drops the boat on you, probably not killing. I could end the review right here because I feel like having the tankiest knight stat line of all time on, you know, a character that can hold Arius with this passive, that's enough. But no, I'm going to keep going. Character has a built-in better Helag Lance. I say better because the wording says when an ally is attacked as opposed to when an ally other than the caster is attacked, which is the wording that we associate with Helag Lance and Unbound Knight Arwell. So Illinav should technically push when you attack her as well. So much for 95 speed being her only real drawback. To further cement to you how insane this unit is, we're going to move on to the skill three. Everyone already knows how strong Vigor has been over the past two years because of Conquer Elias. It increases the offense and defense capabilities of your team. Indomitable is the lesser known variant of this. And yes, it does stack with Vigor and defense buff. Your Arius Knight that gives 30% pen resistance comes stapled with a mini defense buff and a mini effect resistance buff to boot. The fact that they put that all on a skill that injures and is a cleanse for the entire team to me is absolutely wild. Back in the early days of Epic 7, tank down players easily beat cleavers because they lack the damage to punch through your bulk. And the thing is, to offset that, tank down players, they were incredibly weak to debuffs. Debuffers were weak to cleavers because they weren't faster than the cleaver options and they weren't tanky enough to survive. It was basically a triangle meta. Tank down beats cleave, cleave beats control, control beats tank down. Power creep is so unreal in 2024 because we now have a tank down knight that counters the very thing it's supposed to lose to. It even cleanses seal, you know, the thing that the most played and banned unit in World Arena at the moment, you know, uses. So if she's trying to mess with you and your broken passive, you could just get out of it. Finally, we come to the basic attack. This is honestly one of the more loaded basics that I've seen in a while. It has built-in injury and built-in lifesteal. So you already know Illinav is going to be insane on the counter set. The Soul Burn, though, that thing is just baffling to me. I get that they wanted to have a throwback to Red Illinav somewhere in the kit. Because Red Illinav is a character who executes high injured targets with her soul burn. But why would you put it on this character? Right? This thing has the same execution power based on the wording as something like Urban Shadow Shoes Operation Cream Pastry. That's her ultimate. And you put that on a character for 10 souls on a basic. So it's spammable. And the character can hold Arius. And she also cleanses debuffs. Who designed this character? The entire kit straight up feels like karmic justice for how poorly Illinav has been treated over the last few years. It's probably one of the most insane turn two kits 
I think we've ever gotten. Easily right up there with iCarina. And in fact, it honestly might be even better than that. Character feels like a staple unit in every single PvP game mode. If you aren't fast, if you play turn two, please pull this unit. Do not write to me in the comment section, saving for Harseti. I will not feel bad for you when you struggle in PvP going forward. Sorry, not sorry. As for how I would build Empyrean Illinav, I think the skill one having lifesteal and the passive being a Helag Lance makes counter me personally the pick, right? That's what I'm going to try on the character. But honestly, the character still has an absolute metric ton of stuff on the table to try. This might be the most flexible knight since Bellion. Injury set, speedy cleanser, critical hit chance and critical hit damage bruisers, right? There's there's a lot to unpack here. Even the artifact choices are crazy. Aureus, if you want just a standard knight. Bastion of Perlucia to protect specific carries. Helag lands to lean into the passive. Holy sacrifice in case somehow they manage to kill this tanky behemoth of a character. <sighs> Illinav is just too damn good, man. Right? I, I personally think the character is just a slam dunk, 10 out of 10, must pull character. But those are just my opinions. I want to hear from all of you out there now in the comment section below. Will you be pulling for Empyrean Illinav? Will you use your brain and finally stop saving for Harseti? Again, let me know down in the comment section below. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now.